Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I am back with yet another tier list and in today's tier list I'm going to be talking about and ranking some of the best non Ballon d'Or winning seasons in modern football history. However, this video does have one caveat. Actually, it has two caveats, but I already mentioned the first one. The player of the season cannot have won the Ballon d'Or. And the second caveat is we cannot have any Messi and Ronaldo seasons on here. Whether they won the Ballon d'Or or not, we cannot have Messi and Ronaldo here anywhere. Because I'm honestly, bro, sick and tired of talking about those two guys. You guys know how much of a Messi glazer I am. He's my favorite player of all time by far. It's not even close. But obviously, we know, bro. Like, I did a video a couple months back ranking the past 15 Ballon d'Or winners. If you guys want to go see that. And that video, obviously, I glaze Messi and talk about Ronaldo heavily. So if you guys want to hear me talk about those two guys, you can go check out that video. But today, I want to talk about the guys that don't get to shine. The guys that got overshadowed in this generation because those two guys are fucking aliens who just like like took over football for over a decade. Uh, and these guys deserve credit too, man. Even though, even though they didn't win the award, they deserve their flowers either way. And today we're going to give it to them. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. In today's video, we have three tiers. S, A, and B. And as you guys can see, S tier has a five limit in parentheses because today I am holding myself accountable. I am not putting more than five seasons in S tier. I promise you guys. Like, I'm, like I wrote it out so I remember. I'm not forgetting today. We are not going to uh, devalue S tier by putting every single season on there. Only five today. The top five will go into S tier and the rest will find themselves into either A or B. The criteria for this video is going to be pretty simple. Dominance, fear factor, team trophies, individual trophies, just everything that goes into making a player season great. Uh, and yeah, I'm super excited for this video. Some honorable mentions. Wayne Rooney in 0910, who had a fantastic season. Uh, who else am I missing? Falcao in 12-13. Cavani in 11-12. Um, who else? Was Benzema in what was he, Benzema in 2020, 2021, who was really good as well. Luka Modric in 2022, Iniesta in 2010. We're missing a couple here, but I think I got the best ones. Oh, let me actually go over the seasons real quick, by the way. So from left to right, we have Griezmann in 1516, Henri 0203, Suarez 1516, Mohamed Salah 1718, Satan Ibrahimovic in 1314. We have Shatter in 2009, 2010. We have Van Dyke 1819. We have Xavi 0809. We have Lewa 1920. We have Holland 2223. We have Ribery 1213. We have Nate. Neymar 14-15, and then lastly, we have Gareth Bale in the 12-13 season. Uh, so yeah, those are the players that we're going to be ranking today, the seasons. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Any thoughts or comments you guys have, let me know in the comment section. And yeah, let's get into this. First up, we have Antoine Griezmann's 2015-2016 season, which to me is going to fall into A tier. One of the most underrated seasons by one of the most underrated players in football history. Griezmann in 15-16 was unplayable, bro. Now, I could have picked one of two Griezmann seasons. I also could have picked 17-18, two years after that, when France won the World Cup. The reason why I picked 15-16 is because, to me, in terms of output and eye test, he was at a different level this year than any other year in his career, and I think the numbers back that up. Griezmann in 15-16 had 38 goals and 9 assists. That's 47 GA in all comps. Obviously, the best of his career. This guy was insane, bro. Utterly ridiculous and unplayable. He finished third in Ballon d'Or winning behind Messi and Ronaldo. He won a Liga Player of the Year. I mean, he was outstanding, dude. He was outstanding. However, collectively, Griezmann, despite his individual brilliance, had one of the unluckiest seasons in football history. It's like Michael Balak in 02 and Griezmann in 15-16 because his teams, Atletico Madrid and France, lost two tournament finals in heartbreaking fashion. He lost the UCL final on penalties to Real Madrid and France obviously lost the Euro final on an extra time goal by Eder. I end their country and you know what the worst part for Griezmann is he lost both of those finals to the guy who, who eventually ended up beating him out for the Ballon d'Or obviously Real Madrid and Portugal were all the place for both of those teams he won both of those finals and Griezmann unfortunately could not could not win it but like if those two games go differently we might be sitting here talking about Antoine Griezmann being a Ballon d'Or winner in the middle of Messi and Ronaldo's era of dominance bro in 15-16 that's obviously Messi and Ronaldo's peak and Antoine Griezmann almost snatched a Ballon d'Or from both of them if he could just win those two games which it, honestly isn't that crazy to think about because he lost both of them in heartbreaking fashion. It's not like France and Atletico Madrid got spanked. Extra time and penalties. I mean, poor guy. But in those two tournament runs, he was amazing, bro. In the UCL, scored a brace against Barcelona in the quarterfinals in that second leg, which still haunts me to this day to see them obviously go through. Uh, he scored a goal against Bayern Munich in the semifinals as well in the second leg to just like end that tie. He didn't score in the final. He missed a penalty. But to me, he was the best player for Atletico Madrid on that day, along with some other defenders as well. He was really, really good in my opinion in that game in Milan. In the Euro, he had one of the most underrated Euro campaigns in recent history, in my opinion. Uh, uh, scored six goals in that whole Euro run. Six goals, bro. He scored only one in the group stages, but in the, in the knockout rounds, he went off, bro. Scored two in the round of 16, had a goal and two assists against Iceland in the quarterfinals, and then had two goals in the semifinals against Germany. A good Germany team. Not the Germany, te Germany team that we see now, which is like completely falling off. Germany in 2016, two years removed from winning a World Cup, and Griezmann did that against them, against that team. So to me, Griezmann in 15-16, again, he was amazing. The trophy cabinet kind of like it's lacking. I just don't feel comfortable, hence why I put it in H. I just don't feel comfortable putting it in S tier because to me, like I see some of the other seasons here. And I, I, like Again, I have that limit on S tier. If I didn't have a limit today, if I was just being generous with S tier, like I usually am putting every single player on there, I would put Griezmann in S tier. 
but I just don't want to use one. I, I don't want to use up one of my five spots on this Griezmann season. But again, he was amazing. Just not quite S tier worthy in my opinion. Next up, we have Henri in 0203, which to me, I feel comfortable using up one of my five spots in S tier with this guy right here. He's going to go into S tier for me. Uh, the biggest robbery in Ballon d'Or history. Don't let it, don't let anybody tell you otherwise. It's not Schneider in 2010. It's not uh, Ribery in 2013. It's not Ronaldo in 2018. It's not Holland in 2022. It is Thierry Henry in 0203 when he lost to fucking Nedved, bro. He had no business losing to Nedved that season. He was far and away the best player in the world, and his numbers back that up. Listen to these numbers, bro. He had 32 goals and 28 assists in all comps. Almost 60 GA in all comps for Henry. He almost had a 30-30 season. You know how absurd that is? For a guy who wasn't really even a midfielder, he was a, a winger slash striker. To have 28 assists is absurd, bro. His pace, his power, his finishing, his agility, his dribbling, everything about this guy was elite, man. To me, like I said, by far the best player in the world. And his numbers back that up. However, unfortunately for Henri, similar to Griezmann, collectively his team kind of had a down year, especially for Arsenal at that time when they were when they were actually winning trophies and being a really good team. They only won the FA Cup that year. Uh, in the Premier League, they finished second behind Man United, and in the UCL, they got knocked out in the second group stage. But Henri was amazing, and every and, and like obviously in the Premier League, he won the Golden Boot. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure he not he did win the Golden Boot. Uh, in the FA Cup, he didn't score in the final or the semi final, but he was good in that tournament as well. And the UCL, bro, he scored a like go back in the second group stage. He had a fucking insane hat trick. Against Roma, bro. He scored three goals against Roma, and I saw that. Like, there were, I saw a replay of that game like three years back, like during COVID. They were playing like old games, and like, and I forget what channel it was, but I saw that game against Roma in the UCL. It's one of the best hat tricks I've ever seen in my life. It's honestly that good. Go back and watch Henri's hat trick in 0 2 3 against Roma away from home. Like, Roma went up 1 0 early in that game, and Henri single handedly brought them back. His first goal, signature Henri, opened up his hips, curled it to the far post. His third goal, a fucking insane free kick. Like, an insane free kick. I didn't even know Henri had that in his arsenal, bro. So, yeah, I mean, to me, bro, again, FA Cup or not, I don't give a fuck. Like, he won that trophy. It's great for him. I would have put this season in, in S tier whether he won, like, every trophy or no trophies. To me, that season is so dominant, bro. Utterly insane. And, again, the fact that he didn't win a Ballon d'Or is crazy to me. But now, Henri, this is your Ballon d'Or. Meet no Ball, a kid with 6,400 subscribers on, tip, on, on YouTube. I'm giving you your flowers. This, I promise you, is as good as a Ballon d'Or. And to me, you're going to go into S. You're no debate about it. This guy was insane. Unplayable that year. Next up, we have Lucho Luis Suarez, who to me is going to go into S tier as well. I'm going to use up one of my five spots on him as well. Because to me, and listen to me very carefully when I say this, this to me is the single greatest season a striker's ever had. I said it. I said it, and I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck what anybody thinks. It's not Van Basten in, 80, in '89. It's not R9 in '97. It's not Falcao in 2012. I don't, this is the best season a striker's ever had. Luis Suarez in 2015, 2016 had 58 goals and 24 assists in all comps. 58 goals and 24 assists in all comps. He was so complete as a player, bro. Messi was injured for a large part of that season early on. And Luis Suarez and Neymar carried that team, but mostly Suarez, bro. His brace against Ramos during the Santiago Bernabeu when we beat them 4-1. His performance in the Club World Cup final against Lure played, scoring a brace in that game. His game against Arsenal in the, in the UCL uh, round of 16. His game against Atletico Madrid, the first leg in the UCL round of 16. He was the only player in MSN that showed up in that game. In the first leg and the second leg, actually. And Messi and Neymar, I don't know what happened to them in those two games. They, they completely checked out. They were sleeping. And Luis Suarez was amazing in both of those legs. Scored a brace in the first leg, like I mentioned. Two great goals. And he was out, like he was unplayable, bro. His game against Valencia in the, in the Copa Rey when we smashed that Gary Neville team like 7-0. Luis Suarez was utterly insane. Won the golden boot in the middle of Messi and Ronaldo's prime. 13-14 Suarez won the Golden Boot and 15-16 Suarez won the Golden Boot. I could have picked either of those seasons, obviously, but I picked 15-16 because obviously it's very near and dear to my heart. And I honestly do believe, I like, like Barca or not, this to me is Suarez's best season. And I think his numbers back that up. 58 goals and 24 assists is not normal, bro. Like his pace, his 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 physicality, but he could just muscle people off the ball. His finishing was absurd, bro. Every time this guy shot on goal, it was going in. No matter what angle, no matter what foot, every time this guy shot, it was going in no matter what with his head, with his foot, with his toe. He could shoot it with anything, bro, with his fucking nose. This guy was scoring no matter what. And to me, like I said, the best striker season I've ever seen, at least. I don't know about R9 and Bambasia. Maybe some older people can tell me that I'm wrong, but that I've seen at least, and with my own two eyes, I've never seen a better season than that from a striker. And that includes Benzema in 2022 when he was amazing. And that includes, obviously, all those seasons that I mentioned like uh, pre, uh, like earlier. Luis Suarez in 15-16 was unplayable, bro. And to me, rightfully, he's going to go into S tier. This guy was insane. Next up, we have Mohamed Salah's 2017-2018 season, which to me is going to fall into A tier. This guy came into a new league and automatically became a top two player in that league. 44 goals and 16 assists for Mohamed Salah, his first season at Liverpool. He was utterly unplayable, bro. Came in his first season, won the Golden Boot, won PFA Player of the Year, 32 goals in the Premier League season. Broke the record instantly. 
This guy was insane, bro. Had 15 goal contributions in the UCL as well. Made the UCL final with Liverpool. And if it wasn't for Sergio Ramos in that game, doing his best impersonation of fucking Conor McGregor and breaking his arm mid-game for no reason, we might be sitting here talking about Mohamed Salah winning two UCLs. Because I honestly believe Liverpool had a chance in that game if Mo Salah played. But obviously, we'll never know because Sergio Ramos happened. Uh, but yeah, this guy was unplayable, bro. He was so, so good. He had 10 goals and 5 assists in the UCL. Um, and he had a game against Watford that year. I'm not sure if Liverpool fans, like how many Liverpool fans watch me. But if you remember that game against Watford, or just football fans in general, because obviously not, not only Liverpool fans watch Liverpool games. But I don't know if you guys remember, he played a game against Watford at home uh, later in, uh, like, uh, late in that year, in 2017-2018. And Liverpool won 5-0. And Mohamed Salah had four goals and one assist. And he had an insane game, obviously, four goals and one assist. Obviously, it's an insane game. But his first goal was insane, bro. It was, like, similar to Messi's goal against Boateng in the 2015 UCL semifinal. He put this guy on his ass, bro, and just, like, finished it beautifully. He also won the Puskas Award, I forgot to mention. He won the Puskas Award that year. A totally, a total robbery, by the way. One of the biggest robberies in football history. That should have gone to Eden Hazard, not Eden Hazard, to Gareth Bale or Ronaldo for both of their bicycle kicks. Uh, Mohamed Salah's goal against Everton was good. I've seen Messi score that goal against fucking Alaves away from home for 10 years in his career, and he never won the Puskas for that. So to me, that was a robbery. But still, man, he won that award. No one could ever take it away from him. Uh, 60 GA is impressive, making the UCL finals impressive. Liverpool collectively didn't win the FA Cup, didn't win the EFL Cup, finished fourth in the Premier League, so his trophy cabinet is kind of lacking. But again, to me, I don't like if, if, if I was being generous, like with S tier, same thing I said with Griezmann. I, if I was putting every season in S tier like I usually do, I would put this one there as well. But right now, since I only have three spots left, I'm not going to use one of them up on Mo Salah in, tw in 2017, 2018. But still, to me, a great season and A tier worthy for sure. Next up, we have Slatan's 13 14 season, which to me is going to fall into B tier. This season, Slatan had 41 goals and 17 assists. That's good enough for 58 GA. However, it was only gone. I mean, if you guys have watched my videos at this point, you guys know I'm not a big fan of Slatan. He was really good that season he scored a bunch of hat tricks he scored a hat trick against Anderlecht in the UCR I remember away from home in the group stages I remember that game very vividly he scored a hat trick against OG Nice as well in league on he won league on with PSG I forgot to mention uh PSG made the UCL quarterfinals and lost to, to Chelsea that very famous game at Stanford Bridge the second leg where I think David Luiz uh scored a goal I'm pretty sure something happened like some somebody scored from a corner or something but Southern actually did not play that second leg he was injured for like a, a, a good part of that season with an ankle injury so he did not play that second leg that's probably why they lost because I, I think maybe if Southern plays they win but this to me is the best season of Slatan's career, which, you know, I'm not, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of Slatan. I think he's a good player, just very limited. I wanted to add him in here because he deserves, his, he deserves his respect for this year because 58 GA is nothing to laugh about. However, it is, it is in league on in a pretty weak era of league on. It wasn't like the, obviously the best league on and PSG were by far the best team in that league. Uh, but yeah, to me, Slatan again, like I said, great numbers. Uh, one league on, which is great, made it, made it to the quarterfinals in the UCL. Maybe if he plays, who knows, maybe they make the semifinal. But to me, it's just not good enough to go in H with Salah and Griezmann, who did it in the Premier League and, and obviously the, the, the La Liga, Prima Liga, and definitely not with Henri, who did it in the, in the Premier League, and obviously Suarez, who did it in La Liga as well, both prime versions of those leagues. And League on to me, I don't put much respect, I, I don't have much respect for that league. And again, like, Slatan to me, I just like, he was very limited as a player and didn't really impact the game in the way that these other guys did. So for that reason, I'm going to put him in B tier. Next up, we have Wesley Schneider's 2009-2010 season, which to me is going to land him in A tier. Schneider was so good that year, bro. Obviously, people argue that he should have won the Ballon d'Or. I disagree, but I don't want to talk about that right now. I just want to talk about Schneider and give him his flowers because this year he was, again, amazing. He had 13 goals and 16 assists in all comps, 29 GA, and he missed a good part of that season because of injury, by the way. Schneider was injured for a good majority of that season, like in the, in the Serie A season and also in the UCL some games. So those numbers with like being injured is obviously very impressive especially for a center attacking mid a guy who's not really tasked with scoring goals uh Schneider was amazing obviously was a driving force behind a team that won the treble and a team that made the world cup final he to me was the best player in both of those teams and those teams had great players obviously we know Inter had Eto and Milito and Pandev and Sanetti and Lucio and the Netherlands had obviously uh Van Persie Robin and Dirk Kite and to me like I said Schneider was the best player on both of those teams in the UCL run he had a he had a goal in the semifinal against Barcelona in that first leg he had an assist against Bayern Munich in the final obviously to Milito in the in the World Cup, he was amazing that whole World Cup run. He had five goals in the World Cup. Five goals Schneider did. I don't even know how many people know that, but Schneider scored five goals in the 2010 World Cup in South Africa. He had a goal in the semifinal against Uruguay. I think he had a goal against Brazil in the quarterfinals. In the final, obviously, we know that they lost, the Netherlands did, but I think to me, he still played fairly well. And yeah, Schneider was amazing, bro. To me, A tier is very, it's, it's great for him because, again, I can't put him in S tier because those seasons are just better, in my opinion. And Schneider, actually, people argue that he should have won the Ballon d'Or. He didn't even, he didn't even finish in the top three, by the way. It was Messi number one, I think Iniesta was two, or Xavi was two, and Iniesta was three. So Schneider was even, it wasn't even in the top three of Ballon d'Or voting, but still, 
that doesn't mean he didn't have a great season, which he did. Uh, and yeah, to me, it's going to go into a trade again. 29 GA is amazing. Driving force to a, of a trouble winning team and of a World Cup finalist is obviously great. But to me, like I said, Astro is very limited and I can't put him there right now. Next up, we have Virgil van Dijk's 2018-2019 season. And to me, it's going to go into s -tier. I'm using one of my s -tier spots on a center back. I cannot believe it. But Virgil van Dijk in 2018-2019 was that good and he was that dominant. I've said this before, I'll say it again. To me, it's the single greatest center back season in football history or defender season in football history. I've never seen a center back be more complete than Virgil van Dijk and scarier than Virgil van Dijk was in 2018, 2019. Everything you wanted a center back to possess, this guy had. Closing speed, speed in general, uh, aerial ability, both scoring goals and just clearing balls away, tackling ability, and leadership. Everything about this guy was so fucking elite, man. This guy is so, he was so good that year. I mean, like he, he had a stat where he didn't get dribble pass for like every game in the UCL. No one dribbled past this guy. And he played Messi in the UCL and he played Harry Kane in the final. I mean, no one could dribble past this guy. He was a fucking brick wall, a, a brick wall, a one man brick wall. He won the, the he, he finished second in Ballon d'Or winning to prime Messi damn year. We all know how good Messi in 2018, 2019 was and Van Dijk was like three points off of winning the Ballon d'Or instead of Messi as a fucking center back, man. Against, again, arguably the greatest season by the greatest player any of us have ever seen. That's how good Van Dijk was that year. To me, it's good enough to be an S tier no matter what. I'm obviously not talking, I'm not going to talk about his stats because he's a center back, so who cares? But still, Van Dijk that year had six goals and four assists. He had 10, 10 GA for a center back, which is obviously very, very good. Obviously, we know he won the UCL. Liverpool finished second in the Premier League, but he was obviously, to me, the best player on that team. He was better than Mo Salah. He was better than Sadio Mane. He was better than Jordan Henderson. He was better than Bobby Firmino. He was better than Alisson. He was the best player on that team. And I think it showed because when this guy played, that team was just completely different. So to me, he's for sure going to go into S Like I said, I'll say it one more time. The best center back season of all time, Virgil van Dijk 2018-2019. Next up, we have Xavi in 0809. And here come the biased Dick Ryder allegations, guys. But I don't give a fuck. I'm putting Xavi in 0809 in S tier. To me, it's the greatest season a center midfielder has ever had. The greatest, Xavi in 0809 had the greatest center mid season of all time. Van Dijk had the greatest center back season. Xavi had the greatest center mid season of all time. It's better than any Sidan season, even though Sidan's not really a center mid. It's better than any, any modern season, any Tony Cruz, Tony Cruz season, any season of any player, any Iniesta season. I don't give a fuck what player, any KDB, Rodri season. I don't give a fuck. Xavi in 0809 had 10 goals and 31 assists and was a driving force, one of the driving forces behind a team that won the trouble. He was that good. 31 assists, bro. 10 goals and 31 assists. How absurd is that, bro? Was, was UCL final man of the match. Was amazing in every single La Liga game that he played. He was basically, he was amazing in every UCL game, the UCL game that he played as well that year. Sorry, I had the burp. You guys, it had been a couple videos, but now we got it in. Uh, in, the, in, the, in La Liga, he was amazing. I remember his game so vividly against Real Madrid, bro. We all remember that game, the 6-2, where he had four assists in that one game. You could argue, honestly, it's one of the greatest games a player's ever had. And I'm not, I'm not being hyperbolic here. Go back and watch that game and go back and watch how he commanded that pitch. I mean, the assist that he had to Messi in the second half where he does that little pirouette, he was just everywhere, bro. He was so good, man. Xavi in 0809. I wish Xavi was as good a player as he is a manager, man. A manager as he is a player, sorry. If this guy was as good a manager as he is a player, we'd be winning the trouble right now running away. We'd be the best team in, in the world. But unfortunately, he's not that. But again, as a player, bro, I have nothing but love for Xavi. I adore this guy as a player, man. This guy as a player... It gave me so, some of the best moments of my life watching football was watching Xavi. In 0809, a guy who was, I was eight years old and I watched every single game that Barca played that year because obviously I watch every single game that we play every year because I love this team. Uh, Xavi was, to me, like, it's, it was Messi and Xavi on the team. He was better than Henri, he was better than Neto, he was better than Iniesta, he was better than Piqué, Puyol, Busquets, any player on that team. It was Messi and it was Xavi and it was actually kind of close. Oh, by the way, he also finished third in Ballon d'Or voting behind Messi and Ronaldo. As a center mid with 31 assists. So to me, yeah, you guys can say I'm being biased, whatever, blah, 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 blah. I'm not even hearing you right now. I'm like, my camera doesn't talk. So if you guys could be talking to your screen or not, I have no idea what you're saying. So to me, I'm just going to pretend like you're not saying anything and leave Chavi and S here because I trust my gut and I trust what I saw. And this guy, like I said, best center mid season of all time, S tier for sure. Next up, we have Robert Lewandowski in 2019, 2020, which to me is going to put him into S tier. We all know that this guy basically should have won the ball in the world. He should not be in this tier list because he should have won the ball in the world in 2019, 2020. And FIFA should just give it to him. Acknowledge it and give it to him and say, this guy won the ball in the world because we all know he was a rightful winner that year. Just FIFA's being annoying with it and for some reason canceled it. But this guy was so, so good, bro. One of the best striker seasons in modern football history. He had 55 goals and 10 assists. He had 15 goals in the UCL, by the way. Despite the fact that after the round of 16, they only played one leg. He was two goals off like the record. Ronaldo obviously has a record for 17 that he set in 2014. Leondowski was two goals off that record despite only playing one game post round of 16. Again, absurd. In the Bundesliga, he had like 11 straight games in the Bundesliga where he scored in every single game. Not just one goal, by the way. He was scoring two or three or four goals. He was obviously the driving force, the best player on a team that won a sextuple and a treble. One of the best teams of all time, obviously, Bayern in 2019, 2020. We know how good that team was. And Leondowski was a driving force of that team. 
And yeah, man, this guy, he should have won the Ballon d'Or. He should have won the Ballon d'Or. He was amazing that year. I wish we had that Lewandowski now. I wish we had 2019, 2020 Lewandowski right now. If we had Xavi, like if Xavi was as good a player as he is, a manager as he is a player, and we had Prime Lewandowski right now, this team would be the greatest team of all time. If we had Prime Lewandowski and Xavi was like, Xavi was actually a competent coach, Oh my God, we'd be unstoppable. But unfortunately, we have two washed versions of, the, of these two guys. But again, that's not the point of this video. And I don't want to talk shit about them because they, they were great. They are great still as players and as people. I just, I'm really pissed and bitter about how this Barca season is going. But anyway, Lewandowski is going to go into S tier. Next up, we have Erling Haaland in 2022-2023, which to me is going to fall into A tier. Erling Haaland this year had 52 goals and 9 assists at 61 GA. Finished second in Ballon d'Or voting. Won the Premier League Golden Boot. Won PFA Player of the Year. Finished uh, Won the European Golden Shoe as well. Uh, Holland was ridiculous, man. He comes into a new league and instantly, I mean, just takes it over, bro. Instantly takes over the Premier League, uh, sets the new Premier League goal scoring record for a single season. Uh, this guy was insane, bro. He was so, so good at machine. And he's still, obviously, to me, a top three player in the world. But last year, man, what he did with KDB feeding him those balls, obviously, we saw Holland and Dortmund be a machine. But this year, with service and with a great team, we saw that this guy can be the best player on a treble winning team. And that's what he was last year. He was the best player on, the, on a treble winning team. It wasn't Brodery, it wasn't De Bruyne, it was Erling Holland. Yes, he didn't score in the quarterfinal, in the, in the, in the semifinals of the UCL. Yes, he didn't score in the final of the FA Cup. Yes, he didn't score in the final of the UCL. It does not matter. This guy, I mean, he opened up everything for that team. He was a driving force behind that team, in my opinion um and early like obviously man city is a great team and they went with or without holland but we saw that team with holland what like it took him from going from like it took him from you know losing in the semifinals and losing in the finals of the ucl to having erling holland and winning the whole thing in convincing fashion and being in no like no doubt about it the best team in europe so to me holland starts second in ballon d'or voting i mean i could very easily put him in s tier but i think the guys in s tier right now had slightly better seasons than him but yeah, I mean, Holland, 52 goals and 9 assists, second in Ballon d'Or voting. Would have won it if Messi didn't have, like, arguably the greatest uh, World Cup campaign of all time. He, to me, is obviously going to be an A-tier. No debate about it. Next up, we have Frank Ribery's 2012-2013 season, which, to me, is going to fall into B-tier. Now, that might be controversial because people argue, actually, that this guy should have won the Ballon d'Or that year. That, to me, is the biggest bunch of bullshit ever. Ronaldo was the rightful winner of that Ballon d'Or. He was the best. Him and Messi were better than Ribery by far. And I also think you could argue that Iniesta and Xavi were better than him as well. And also, I don't know, Robin, I mean, Mueller also. I, I just, like, look, Ribery was a great player. He had 11 goals and 23 assists in that whole, in, 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 uh, in that season, which is obviously great output. And Ribery wasn't really a guy who was tasked with scoring goals. He was more of a playmaker, less direct than Robin. Uh, he was really, really good, obviously. A driving force behind that team, a trouble winning team that was, again, that Bayern team, one of the best teams of all time. And Ribery was arguably, arguably the best part on that team. But to me, when I look at Frank Ribery, his dominant factor and his pure factor was not like the players above him. Like when I see these players in these seasons, I was like, holy shit, these guys were feared. I don't think many people feared Frank Ribery in 12-13. Now, I, that might sound corny, that might sound goofy. Very, that's obviously a very fair point if you're making that one right now. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? That's not how you analyze a player. Well, to me, it matters, bro. Like when I see Frank Ribery in 2012, 2013, he was great. Again, he was really, really good. But to me, is he as good as Mo Salah in 2017, uh, 2017, 2018? Is he as good as Schneider in 2009, 2010? Is he as good as Holland last season? No, he's not. He was really, really good. That's why he made this list. And B tier's not an insult, by the way, but someone's got to go in there. I put that tier in there for a reason. So someone's got to be in B tier. He's going to go next to Slatan. Again, he finished third in Ballon d'Or voting. He won the treble. He was amazing, bro. Again, a driving force behind one of the best teams of all time. But to me, I just don't think he's good enough. Last season's good enough, despite the fact that he finished top three in Ballon d'Or, to put him in A tier or even in S tier, obviously. Next up, we have Neymar's 24. 2015 season which to me is gonna land him in a tier neymar jr was so good that year bro he had 39 goals and 10 assists 49 ga finished third in ball and door voting was ucl joint top goal scorer with messi and ronaldo and was dominant in that ucl run for barcelona dominant messi was obviously the best player for us that season neymar was to me second he was better than suarez that year suarez was better the next year but neymar in 2014 2015 was insane bro scored in the ucl quarterfinals against psg had, was amazing actually in both of those games was amazing against Bayern munich in the semifinals scored two goals away from home and scored a goal at home the last goal the 3-0 in that game that passed from messi scored a goal the final goal in berlin to beat juventus in that final the 3-1 um and neymar was just amazing bro he was so so good he was obviously like um he was like i don't even know what to say i'm speechless bro because I, I just thought about that game against you i'm sorry i just thought about that game against juventus in berlin and I just remember that it's been nine years since Barcelona went to UCL, and I got a little sad. But anyway, moving on past that, Neymar this year was amazing. I mean, his playmaking, his finishing, his dribbling, him along with Suarez and Messi in that MSN trio, obviously formed the greatest trio of all time. And Neymar was obviously, um, to me, the second best player on that trio. Um, so yeah, Neymar's going to go into A tier for me. 49 GA was pivotal in that UCL run, was amazing in La Liga as well, was amazing in the Copa del Rey as well. Um, a tier for sure for Neymar Jr. I miss this guy, bro. I wish, uh, uh, I miss this Neymar so much. And then to finish it up, we have Gareth Bale in 12-13, which to me is going to fall into B tier. Gareth Bale this year had 24 goals and 16 assists. 
40 GA in the Premier League, bro. As a left wing back, basically. He wasn't really a left back or a left mid. He was really a left wing back, just going up and down that left hand side, tracking back. His work rate was insane. His, his stamina was crazy, bro. Gareth Bale did not get tired in his prime. He was so clinical this year, bro. He was so, so good. I remember his game against West Ham away from home, scoring two goals. I mean, he was just so, so good. But he was carrying that team with Jake Livermore and Cliff Dempsey and fucking Adebayor and Kabul as well. I mean, he was so good. But that Spurs team had no business finishing in the top five. And Gareth Bale single handedly dragged him there. That was his last season before going to Real Madrid. And that's what got him that big money move to Real Madrid. That season just, he carried that team, bro. He had, like, that team had no business doing whatever they did. And they did that because of Gareth Bale, a young Gareth Bale. Again, so clinical, so fast, so explosive. I mean, this guy was insane, bro. Like, the closest thing the Premier League had to Ronaldo when Ronaldo left. He was that good. Obviously played similar positions. Ronaldo was a little bit more advanced than Gareth Bale, especially in, in like uh, uh, when when they were defending, but still very similar positions, playing on the left hand side, tracking back and forth. And Gareth Bale, bro, uh, he was amazing. Just to me, I can't put it in A tier because again, I, maybe maybe it's the fact that he played for Spurs. I mean, his numbers just to me aren't as good as the other guys here. And also, no trophies won. Played in the Europa League, it's just not good enough for me to put him in A tier. But don't get me wrong, like, I, I wanted to add the season in there for a reason because I wanted to give Gareth Bale's props because he was that good. If you have not gone back and watched Gareth Bale this season, go back and watch his highlights. You will not be disappointed, I promise you. And that, guys, is the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, man. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys have any disagreements or comments, let me know in the comment section, like always, because I love to chat with you guys. I think I did a little bit better job today of like, like spreading the tier list around, not putting everybody in S tier. Uh, we have a pretty good balance here. And yeah, man, I hope you guys enjoyed. I love every single one of you, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.